This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Namibia is located on the southwestern part of Africa, and it's truly one of a kind. It's one of the driest, flattest, and least densely populated countries in the world. Its stunning landscape is defined on the west coast by the Namib Desert, the oldest desert in the world. Oh, and by the way, that's exactly what I'm standing on right now, the Namib Desert. And while perhaps this vast expanse of sand is not the most inhabitable place for humans, it is teeming with wildlife and rich in natural mineral resources. Everything from diamonds to gold to silver to copper to zinc and uranium. Mining these natural minerals is the single most important contributor to the Namibian economy. It provides for about a quarter of Namibia's revenue and accounts for over half of its annual export earnings. Seen as a highly strategic natural resource, uranium was discovered here in the Namib Desert in 1928, and the first commercial uranium mine began operations in 1976. Subsequently, uranium attracted Namibia's biggest investment, approximately 5 billion US dollars from Swakop Uranium, which is a joint venture partnership between China and Namibia. This investment is China's largest industrial investment in Africa, and today, Swakop Uranium is one of the largest mining employers in the country. On this special edition of Talk Africa, we'll sit down with the CEO of Swakop Uranium and the governor of the Urongo region to discuss the impacts, challenges, and opportunities provided by uranium mining in Namibia. I am Liu Feifei. Welcome to Talk Africa. So we begin by getting a grip on how uranium is extracted and processed. Let's take a look. The process is similar whether you're mining gold or whether you're mining diamonds or whether you're mining you know, uranium. And it basically starts off with uh, there's a discovery in the ground. That discovery is, is, is defined in terms of drilling. Uh, where they uh, where they say okay there's X amount of tons at, at this grade and uh, you can mine this for the next 20 20 years. Once that is defined, then uh, then we come in with the machines now and we start drilling uh, and to break the rock. We drill, we blast, we break the rock, and then the machines then will then come out and and they will mine the rock, depending on 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 the type of material. So the material after we've broken the rock is classified. This material is waste, meaning there's nothing in it. This material is ore, meaning that there's, there's some, some, in our case, uranium. Uh, the ore is then sent through to the, to the crusher. Now, the crusher is basically reduces uh, the size of the, of the rock to, to, a, to, a design, to a design size and reduce even further through a process that we call milling. And when it's micron, micron size is like minutes. That material is then taken through through the process and uh, and it's screened to a, to a specific size before it's taken to what we call the leaching, with where, where they will then add mix that material with the chemicals that are required to dissolve the uranium. The uranium is then dissolved into solution. Uh, so 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 once it's in solution, it goes through a a, a process of uh, a solid and uh, liquid separation. And because the uranium is now in solution, the solids then get taken out as waste, and the solution is passed forward, and it goes through again some uh, chemical chem chemical inter in, uh, interventions to then take it out of the solution into its uh, solid form. So now the solid form is then what we we refer to as the uh, diurinate, uh, diurinate. In our case, the in the uranium in in, in, our, in our uranium process, and that is now what gets processed to produce the, the yellow cake, which is put in drums, and that is where our process ends. 
Joining me now to offer us more insight on uranium mining and its impact is Cai Yusheng, CEO of Swarkop Uranium. Yusheng, it's very nice to see you and thank you for taking time to talk to Talk Africa. Now, China's investments in Africa has been a very hot topic in recent years. And of course, Swakop Uranium represents, I believe, the single largest investment made by China on the continent. Um, so can you first walk us through the history of how this project came to be? Yeah, thank you to have me on. Uh, yeah, you're right. You know, uh, Swakop Uranium is the single biggest, I would say, industrial investment in Africa. Now, you know, in the local environment, people are used to call Sokwe Uranium as an iconic project in both Namibia and the whole African continent in terms of, in terms of its size, in terms of its impact in, in the industry. Uh, one Namibia state-owned mining company, they own 10% of the share of this project. And the other 90%? Yeah, belongs to Chinese investor. Of course, one is the CGMPC, another one is the, is the, is the China African Fund. Can you tell us about how uranium came to be explored here in this country, and specifically here at the Husab mine? How did it begin? Actually, it was 40 years ago, uh, the Russian uranium mine mm -hmm. started to be developed. Then later on, another uranium mine, it is also be just beside soap uh, uranium. Now, the soap uranium is the third one. According to you know, geological theory, this area should be an area where you know, you know, uh, 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 the uranium metal during long, long time of you know, uh, uh, geographic movement, this area become an area with a concentration of uranium metal. Then, I would say 10 to 12 years ago, a large-scale exploration started here. Because normally, to find new uranium asset, normally you, st you start to look at those area next to current uranium mine. So that's the very common practice. Since the beginning of, uh, of, of, of 2000, you know, China actually formulated a very aggressive program of developing nuclear power. But you know, China, I mean, the uranium resource in China is relatively poor. In uranium industry, there is a very, very strange uh, 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 thing where, you know, the country with big nuclear power capacity doesn't have uranium resource. But for country with rich uranium resource, they don't develop nuclear power. Or they don't have the yeah, it's first, capacity Like for example, so. Canada, Australia. They have very rich uranium resource, but they don't develop nuclear power. In a country like in the US, many European countries, China, India, Japan, there's a big you know, nuclear power capacity, but they don't have the uranium resources. So sometimes the uranium market is quite different from the market of other metal commodities. What role does mining play in this country? The, the role of this investment in this country, at first, uh, it will bring Namibia to the third largest uranium producer in the market. That's very quick. Uh, for mid-term or long-term, I think it will, you know, 
bridge, you know, you know, the partnership relation between China and Namibia to a high level. In 2018-2019, every year, there is a high-profile visit by you know, the ambassadors of more than 20 African countries. They came to the site, they look at how you know, the operation is managed, they look at how you know, uh, this kind of industrial, man industrial investment will, will facilitate growth of the country in all the areas, I would say. And you started to touch upon the impact of this company. And what you said earlier was basically it's a marriage, right, between the country that has the resource and the country that is looking for this resource. Can you elaborate more on this partnership and the overall economic impact it's having on Namibia? Now, currently, we, 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 we directly employ it around 1,800. But you know, in economic theory, there is a there is multiple impact, which means if you talk about job security, you know, these 1,800 employee plus, those related should be around, should be more than 10,000. That's, you know, the impact over job security. And then we can talk about another area, the local business. Of course, Sokunyan will buy a big volume of surveys, goods, from you know, local business. The product value of this company is almost 5% of Namibian GDP. Our auto consumption takes around 12% of the national auto consumption. Our electricity takes around 15% of the national electricity. The value of import and export of soft uranium takes around 20% of the country's import and export value. And uh, up to now, the training cost the company paid is around, I think it's around, it's more than 100 million renminbi. If you say in Namibian dollars, it's more than 400 million Namibian dollars. And that makes it in US dollars? 30 million US dollars. In training alone? In training alone. Because that is you know, surprising. What, what kind of training are your employees receiving? You know, we train the operator from fresh to an skilled. We train, you know, the management team from low level to high level. And also we, we trained the graduates to become an substantive or let me say experienced employee. So uh, in the meantime, of course, we procured quite a number of uh, training equipment. For example, we, 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 we procured a simulator of whole truck, the big truck, several hundred tons. So we, we procured various simulators to train people how you know, to operate shovel, whole truck, grader, all those kind of equipment. Over the years, there have been a number of nuclear disasters, Chernobyl, to name one that I think comes to most people's minds, and Fukushima, the most recent ones, it has severely impacted the uranium industry. Do you still think uranium is a sustainable form of clean energy going forward? In terms of uh, technology development, 
I don't think you know the similar extent as Chernobyl, Fukushima will repeat in the future. You know, yeah, it's a little bit professional, but if you look at the root cause of those accidents, I would say it is primarily because of human being factor. But now various technology has been deployed to prevent this kind of you know, human being failure. In the long journey of you know, human being development, we're actually always you know, m making selection between benefit and risk. If you take airplane, risk. Even you are drinking water, risk. So risk is everywhere. Well, and that's a worthy accomplishment. Thank you so much for talking to us. I've Thank learned you. a lot. Thank you very Thank you. much. And now it's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we will speak with the governor of the Irongo region to find out more about uranium and its impact on the Namibian economy. Stay tuned. <laughs> Life moves pretty fast. Ideas move at the speed of sound. Technology moves at the speed of light. If you don't filter out the noise, you might miss the details. We pay attention to the details because they matter. Showing you a different perspective. See the difference. Welcome back to Talk Africa. We are joined now by the governor of the Irongo region, Cleophas Muchavikwa. Thank you, sir, very much for, for joining us. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, we've spent a couple days in your beautiful country and have been very impressed uh, overall and with this region in particular. Now, Namibia is generally regarded as a country on the rise. Despite uh, some negative growth in recent years, you enjoy a stable government structure, and you are endowed with lots of natural mineral resources. Can you tell us a little bit more about your region in particular? I believe it's one of 14 regions in Namibia. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, our region is the, uh, the most beautiful region in the world. <laughs> That's the only region where the, the sea meets the dunes. And uh, we have uh, natural beauties of dunes, uh, the most uh, attractive region, uh, the tourism destination of the world. With regard to our region, our region, as I said already, is a tourism destination of the world. Then we are a mining region, uh, boasting with our uranium belt. Uh, then we are also the fishing region of Namibia. Uh, we are having a very big uh, fishing factories. And then uh, the logistics hub of SADAC, uh, meaning that we are having the, uh, we are saving the landlocked countries, the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. Whenever they are importing and exporting, they normally do it through our re recently well refurbished port. We are, an, in fact, an industrial center of Namibia, uh, having many of our employment, act um, employ employment activities taking place in our region. Uranium, which you mentioned just now, was discovered here, I believe, in the 1920s, in the late 1920s. Uh, and, of course, from what we understand, it's attracted the largest investment to Namibia to date. Can you tell us about uh, the role uranium has played in the development of this region? Yeah, uranium played a, a very vital role, specifically the Rossing uranium mine during the booming time of the prices. 
Rosing played a very, very major role. Uh, the town of Swakopmund and the town of Arandes was uh, mainly built by Rosing, uh, which means that uh, Rosing did not only play a major role in developing and uranium specifically, did not play only a role in developing Erongo, but Namibia. Uh, Rossing, of course, was the first uranium mine, uh, which started operations, I believe, in the 1970s. It's coming to the end of its term. Is that correct? Yes, uh, coming to the end of it, uh, its period, uh, but uh, they have huge deposits that can take them for another same period almost. On the other hand, you have a new uranium mine, which is a joint partnership between the Chinese government and the Namibian government. This is the Swakop uranium. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of that and how this partnership came to be? The, the Swakop uranium mine uh, is uh, one of the flagship uh, mining uh, operation in Namibia. Uh, it came and found us at the time when the uranium prices were totally on their knees, on its knees, and uh, it helped us a lot to ensure sustainability of employment, uh, especially at the construction. They came at a time when Arriva, one of the bigger uranium mines also, in fact, uh, went on care and maintenance and we had a lot of employees on the streets and that, that helped us to sustain employment. Uh, employment was, was a primary concern during that specific period of, of uh, slump in the uranium prices. Uh, as a flagship mine, uh, the construction period uh, uh, went uh, very well. Uh, yes, we had some teething problems. Uh, we had some cultural gelling to do uh, between the Chinese and uh, the Namibian worker, uh, both of them coming from two different cultures. Uh, a Chinese working ethics and culture is totally different from what we are used to. Uh, working. Uh, once again, a Chinese worker, the, the trade union, the old Chinese trade union, uh, was totally, uh, operate totally different from our westernized trade union structures, mainly inherited from the British trade union uh, background. Uh, Ours are more radicalized, the Chinese trade unions are more collaborative. Now, all those things played a major role in jailing that early period of Swakop uranium. Uh, we overcome, we had very brilliant uh, Chinese uh, managers and uh, general managers uh, that we, work, we were working hand in gloves to try to break, break that specific uh, uh, ice, and uh, surely we, we manage it, and uh, the mine was very well constructed. And I presume they also source quite a bit of other resources to supply the mines regionally. Yes, uh, there are some uh, uh, beneficiations in terms of sourcing of materials and uh, consumables. But we need to also to up that one. We, as leadership in the region, we are not that much comfortable. Uh, we also see that many of the uh, very simple things are still coming from the People's Republic of China, which we think can be uh, sourced in Namibia. A T-shirt, the overalls, the boots, we would like all those things to be sourced locally so that we can also have a manufacturing base uh, in the country, instead of supporting only the main uh, shareholders' uh, manufacturing base.
The sheer number of job opportunities provided by SWACOP is quite impressive nonetheless. What about the quality of these jobs? You mentioned that there's a high level of mechanization, modernization at the mines. In fact, when I visited, it was very different from what I expected. I thought there would be people walking around you know, with equipment going into the rocks. But in fact, I've seen the largest trucks I've ever seen in my life. Um, do you think these are good quality jobs? Uh, in terms of quality of Swako uranium, when it comes to employment, is is highly quality jobs. Uh, Swako uranium does not underemploy; they employ. <laughs> There's a difference between underemployment and employment. Please explain. Uh, underemployment is when you remain a subcontracting and putting people at the a periphery of employment. But uh, we have a situation where Swako uranium is employing employees, quality jobs, on the job training that is taking place very well. Uh, people are being polished in order to do their job, uh, their, their job decently. This project has received a lot of praise all around from other African presidents and from your own president, President Hage Gingob has said to the Chinese government, you've impressed me with your huge investment. This is indeed a good investment, taming the mountains and civilizing the desert. Namibia is proud to have you as our partner. Uh, in your words, how would you characterize the impact of this partnership? is the flagship of a wrong origin. The best investment ever that we managed to attract. Uh, in fact, we, we in the leadership at the regional level had been also put under heavy instruction to guard, to protect this egg from falling down. Uh, but to protect it jealously, and to make sure that this partnership is going to herald new partnerships in the future. We're just about out of time. Let's leave our last question on the issue of sustainability. Now, uranium is a finite resource. Uh, what are your thoughts about the future of this region beyond uranium mining? I, I understand the Husab mine, which is operated by Swakop, has a license for 20 years. Well, what's going to happen after this? In terms of the sustainability, we would like also Namibia to have nuclear electricity. That is something that we were talking about all the years. And uh, we also inform the management of CNNC, as well as the management of uh, Swako Piranium or HUSAP, that uh, we cannot just take out and export we can also take out and keep part for our own reactors. Modern technology proves that it can be done uh, safely. Uh, when I was in China, I managed to visit one of the nuclear reactor, very much safe, uh, advanced technology, and it can be done with advanced technology. Well, on that note, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you Governor. very much. Mucha vikwa. Mucha vikwa. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank sir. you very much. <laughs> and that's all we have time for on this special edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to all of our guests. And remember, you can catch this and other episodes of Talk Africa on the CGTN Africa website and on our YouTube playlist. You can also be a part of the conversation through our social media handles on Facebook and Twitter. I am Liu Feifei. From me and the entire team here on location in Swakopmund, Namibia, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>